this is the second part of our uh, discussion about chapter this is chapter four uh, we were done with the first part the first part was about magnetic circuit and the second part will be about magnetically coupled circuit but before we go to magnetically coupled circuit first uh, we need to discuss this some uh, concepts for us to continue the first one is electromagnetic induction when the conductor is moved across a magnetic field so as to cut through the lines or uh, we call it flux there is an electromotive force or emf that is being produced in the conductor and if the conductor forms a closed uh, circuit then that emf produces or causes an electric current to flow around the circuit hence this is the ter where the term came from induced emf so we call it induced emf because this is the emf being induced in the conductor because of electromagnetic induction now according to faraday he formulated two two laws for electromagnetic induction the first law is this one an induced emf is set up whenever the magnetic field linking that circuit changes so uh, take note of that changes the magnetic field changes there's an emf when there's a change in magnetic field and the direction, the magnitude of the induced EMF in any circuit is proportional to the rate of change of the magnetic flux. So there's an EMF being uh, induced when there's a change. Now, in that magnitude, according to the second law, is in proportional with that change of magnetic flux, linking the circuit, which is called the flux linkages. Okay, so that's electromag uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. And that flux linkage is, uh, is this one. And it's the flux multiplied by the number of turns. And if we put the loss in mathematical form and we include Glenn's law, because before the, the mathematical uh, for uh, equation for the induced CMF according to uh, Faraday's law is just the, the the change in uh, magnetic flux linkage but Lenz's law says that uh, it should be negative because the, the direction of the induced EMF is always such that it tends to set up a current opposing the motion or the cha change of flux responsible for this induced EMF. So to to confiscate that he he said that it should be negative because it's <laughs> the opposite direction of the motion of the charge change of flux. So here, you see negative because of lens. And we can also neglect that negative. It's just the direction. We can also neglect it if we want just to uh, to look at the magnitude of the voltage or the EMF later on. Okay, then, so from this electromagnetic induction, we can now go here. Uh, how do we generate uh, EMF? or induce EMF. So we use a moving straight conductor in a magnetic field. So here, there are two ways to for us to have a changing flux. Or in other terms, they call it cutting cutting of fluxes, just like the first term that I define electromagnetic induction. So if we want, these are the fluxes here. So these are lines, fluxes are lines, remember. So if we want to cut those flux using a conductor. So if we cut those flux, what we do is we induce EMF because there's a change 
in that flux. When we cut them, there's a change in that. And there are two ways to do that. Either we move the conductor in that direction, or either we move the magnetic field. So either way um, is true that we can cut still the, the magnetic flux. And so look at this uh, drawing here. We have north and south. This north and south, these are magnets. It can be also electromagnet. Uh, we can also use in our generators nowadays, uh, alternators, AC generators. They don't use permanent magnet. They use electromagnet. So what they do is they have two poles. And to generate this pole, these are just steel in, in generator. And they put coils here. And another oil here. So these are core, called uh, the field, generator field. Then if there's a current flowing here, what happens is this steel becomes magnetically or permanent magnet, just like what we discussed before in magnetic circuits. Then if you have here a conductor that is moving upward or downward, but usually that's not the direction. We use a rotating, uh, rotating conductors. We usually use rotating conductors. So this is what it looks like here and here. So if you draw it, so if you imagine this is these are uh, conductors. This is one coil, the positive negative. So there's a current. If you connect this one with a resistor or load, then we have a current flowing here. This is a conductor. So there's a current flowing here. When this is uh, moving, so remember this is moving, goes up, it rotates, it rotates, and this one goes down. Until, so this one rotates in that direction and then goes back again. And this is how we generate an alternating current because if we can observe uh, the maximum maximum induced emf that we can produce is at this point when we are at this point of the conductor when we move in that direction then this is uh, the the uh, lesser or the most uh, minimum or approximately zero induced emf that is being produced so if you look at remember our sinusoidal, there's a maximum and there's a zero point of the induced EMF. So this is the reason why it's a sinusoidal because when we rotate that one, this is uh, the induced EMF. And also because of this formula, the induced EMF being produced is actually equal to this one. It's equal to the magnetic field. Magnetic field here, multiply it by the length of the conductor here, the length of the conductor, then multiplied it with sine of theta, where theta is the angle between the direction of the velocity or the movement of the conductor and uh, the flux, magnetic flux or magnet, magnetic field. So if uh, they are in perpendicular, then sine of 90 is equal to 1. It's the maximum that we can have uh, the value for E. When it's equal to uh, 0, if they are they are in the same direction, then what happens? The, the induced CMF will also be equal to 0. Just like here, this conductor is going into that direction because it's rotating. And we know that the or the other way around in that direction, then the magnetic field is also in that direction. There, so they have the same direction. So the, the voltage here or GCMF becomes zero because the angle between them is uh, zero, so sine of zero. So this is in general. But if the movement of the conductor is just equal to this uh, drawing, it's just upward and not downward. These are called linear generator because the their movements are linear. 
is just upward and downward motion, then they always be in perpendicular. So it's always be the maximum value for the uh, induced EMF. So if we, for example, we move this one upward, then later on, we move it again downward. So what will be the produced induced EMF? It's still a alternating current because if you go up and you go down, the direction also changes. But it's not sinusoidal just like this one, but it looks like this. It's a square wave. A sinusoidal square wave. Why? Because it's always perpendicular. Then later on, it goes back. But in the opposite direction, it's still the same magnitude but in the opposite direction because it's still 90 degrees and it goes back again and so on. Unlike the rotational, it changes gradually because it's rotating. At every point, at every point when it rotates, it has a different angle. The angle between the motion or the velocity and the magnetic field is also changing. And so, therefore, the value is not constant. It's always changing. And that direction, I said that the direction here changes. Why it changes? And how do we know the direction? According to Lenz law, we can, uh, we know that it's opposite of the, the direction of the voltage is opposite of the change in flux. But there's a better way to determine the direction of the induced EMF. We can use the right hand rule. We call it the Fleming's right hand rule or generator rule. So we use our right hand rule. Our our thumb represents the direction of the motion while the first finger represents the direction of the field and the second finger represents the direction of the current. So if you look at, uh, so if this is our drawing here, uh, I hope I can draw this one. So this is our, this is the thumb. So this is this direction. So this is thumb. And that represents the direction of the motion. So this represents the direction of the motion. This one is the first finger first. And it represents the direction of the field. Magnetic field. And last one, this one is the third or the second finger second or the middle finger and it represents the direction of the current or emf so here the direction of the current because it's moving upward in this figure the conductor is moving upward so the direction of the velocity is also upward and the direction of the field is from left to right then if you use right hand rule then the direction of uh, the current should be it's the direction of the current it should be in that direction towards th this direction so that's the right hand rule now let's take an example we can apply this formula now so the the unit for this one will be in volts and b here is in tesla l is in meter and v is in meters per second remember l here this is that this is not the total length of the conductor but this is the length that is on the field remember this one this is the length that experienced the, the flux density or the magnetic field so it's not the total length of the conductor it's only the length that is exposed to the magnetic field let's take an example here a conductor 50 millimeter long moves at a velocity of 2.5 meters per second across a magnetic field of 0 0.9 Weber per square meter. 
or that is Tesla. What is the voltage generated? So what's the voltage generated? Okay, so we can use our formula for solution. So the induced EMF is equal to B times L times V times sine theta. So, so we, we only care about the magnitude here. So what will be our B? Our B is 0.9. Weber per square meter. So, we, we don't need to convert that one. Uh, what do we need to convert is the the length of the conductor, which is equal to 50 millimeters. So, the length of the conductor is 50 millimeter. And this is equivalent, we need to convert this one in meter, which is, this is 0 0.05 meters. So, we can directly use the formula. It's direct substitution. So we have 0 0.9, we multiply it with uh, L, 0 0.05, and we multiply it with the velocity, which is uh, 2.5 meters per second. But what is sine of theta here? So the angle between them, the, the motion and the magnetic field does not given or does not uh, is not in the problem. So what we can do here is we can assume that it's perpendicular just like our figure in above figure. So we can say that the angle between them, so assume, we can assume. If it's not given, we can assume theta equals 90 degrees because we, we want the maximum. So we just multiply it with sine 90 or this is equal to 1. So the voltage now or the induced CMF in the conductor will be equal to this one, 0 0.1125 volts. Okay? So you can assume that it's 90 degrees. But if the problem says that if the angle between them is 90, it's not 90 degrees, then you should include them in the equation. Next, a magnetic field coil produces 100,000 maxwells with 2,000 turns and with a current of 2 amps. The current is cut off and the flux collapses in 0 0.01 second. What is the magnitude of the average voltage that will appear across the coil? So we only need to know the magnitude. So how do we solve for the magnitude? So here we we'll use the uh, Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction. We use AMF, so we want only the magnitude. So we can use small letter E here. This is N, so it's average volume. I, I don't use D flux over DT, but we can also use flux over the time. For uh, this is this is the average volume. Remember your P6. When we say average, it's just this one. But if you say the instantaneous volume, then we include it. Uh, we use the differentials. So given the number of turns and flux is in is equal to 100,000. So N here is equal to 2,000 turns. But the flux, remember, the, uh, take note of this one, it's in maxwells. So 100,000 maxwells. So what is this Maxwell? This Maxwell is actually not in MKS. So we need to convert it into MKS. So how do we convert it to MKS? Or what is the equivalent of Maxwell's in MKS? The equivalent is Weber. So we just multiply the conversion. What's the conversion? One Maxwell is equivalent to 1 times 10 to the 8 Weber. Or it should be Weber, or it should be Maxwell. Sorry. Uh, so one Weber divided by one times ten to the eight Maxwell. So we can cancel out Maxwell. 
and the remaining unit will be Weber. So the flux now in terms of Weber is 1 times 10 to the negative 3 Weber. And this is what we use to solve for the induced EMF. So the induced EMF now will be equal to N2000 times uh, the flux, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 3 and divided with the time. The time is 0 0.01. 0 0.01 second. And that's okay. So the induced EMF now will be equal to, so this is equal to 200 volts. We only care about the magnitude, so there's no negative. But usually this should be negative if we consider the magnitude. Next problem. A piece of conductor, 10 cm long, moves across a magnetic field of 10,000 Gauss at a velocity of 120 centimeter per second. What voltage appears across the conductor? So here, uh, to, in order for you to know the, the formula that you use is take note of the given. We have given length, which is 10 centimeter. We have given magnetic field, so this is B, which is 10,000. Gauss. Then what else? We have given the velocity, which is 120 centimeter per second. So if you look at the givens, what formula does relate these all givens? So the formula that relates them, if you want to solve for the voltage, is just equal to B L times B times sine. Theta. And again, there's no given theta here. So we can assume theta to be equal to 90 degrees or in perpendicular. But before we substitute the values, take note that there, these values are not in MKS system. We cannot use them directly to this formula. So what we do is to convert them into MKS system. So for the length in MKS, this should be equal to 10 centimeter divided by 100, or this is 0 0.1 meter. And for the field, uh, we need to convert this one into MKS. The equivalent is Tesla. So what will be the relationship between Tesla and Gauss? What's the relationship or what's the conversion? One Tesla is equivalent to 10,000 Gauss. So this one is just equal to one Tesla. Then for the velocity V, so 120 centimeter divided by uh, 100 and it should be equal to 1.2 meters per Second, so we can now all substitute this one in our equation. So the induced CMF now will be 1 Tesla 1 times the length 0 0.1 times 1.2 times sine, sine of 90 degrees. And the answer will be equal to 0 0.12 volts. Okay? Ah, another example. At what velocity must a conductor 75 millimeters long cut a magnetic field of flux density 0 0.6 Tesla if an EMF of 9 volts is to be induced in T? Assume in what? To be induced in it. Assume the conductor Assume the conductor, the field, and the direction of the motion are mutually perpendicular. So, theta is equal to 90 degrees. So theta equals 90 degrees perpendicular. Then, we have length equals 75 millimeter. Convert this one into meters. This is 0 0.075 
uh, meters. Then we have B equals 0 0.6 Tesla. That's okay. Then given the voltage in this EMF, which is equal to 9 volts. What we want to determine is uh, the velocity. So using again our formula, the voltage is equal to B length times velocity times sine of theta. So given E is 9 and that's in volts, so that's fine. B is in Tesla and we, do, we don't need to convert that one, 0 0.6 Tesla. Then we multiply it with the length 0 0.075. And we want to determine V. And this is 90 degrees. So solving for B here, V will be equal to 9 divided by 0 0.6 times 0 0.075. Or this is equal to uh, 300. It should be equal to... 200 meters per second. So the unit is meters per second. Why meters per second? Because we are in MKS. So that's the velocity that is required for us to induce a 9 volt uh, induced EMF in the conductor. Next. The wingspan of a metal aeroplane is 36 meters. So airplane. This is basically an airplane. If the airplane is flying at 400 kilometers per hour, determine the EMF induced between its wingtips. Assume the vertical component of the Earth's magnetic field is 40 micro Tesla. So there's an airplane and we have a vertical component. So meaning the direction is vertical. So vertical, so this is the magnetic field in vertical component can be either upward or downward. This is the earth. And there's an airplane here moving. And there's an induced EMF across its tip from here to here of the wings. And we need to determine that one when it cuts this flux. This flux or field of the earth, which is equal to 40 Micro Tesla. So what will be the angle between the velocity and the field? So obviously, the direction of the aeroplane is in that direction. So it goes into that direction. So therefore, the angle between them should be equal to 90 degrees or they are in perpendicular. So if you want to determine now, we need to know the length of this one, the length of the conductor or the length of the wings, which is approximately equal to 36 meters. And its speed, velocity, so solution, the velocity of the airplane is 400 kilometers per hour. So we need to convert this one. We need to convert it into meters per second. So I need to multiply it here. One kilometer is equivalent to 1,000 meters. Then one hour is equivalent to 3,600 seconds. So R cancel out, kilometer cancel out, so the remaining will be meters per second. So the velocity will be equal to what? It will be equal to 400 over 36. It should be 400 over 36 meters per second. Then the formula. Our formula, the UCMF equals B, the length times the velocity times sine theta. So... B here is given 40 micro tesla, or this is 40 times 10 to the negative 6. And you multiply it with the length, which is 36 meters. So we just multiply it with 36. Then the velocity, which is 400 over 36. Then we have a sine of the angle between the, the velocity and the field is 90 degrees there right perpendicular. So therefore, the voltage will be equal to 0 0.16 volts. So there's an induced EMF across the wings of the airplane. So this is electromagnetic induction. Now let's move on with our discussion. Next topic will be about induction inductance of the coil because we know we need inductance we need coils when we apply coils to a certain core or steel or something for our magnetic material 
that ferromagnetic material turns into a, a magnet. We call that electromagnets. So now, if there is a coil, then there is an inductance. And the inductance now will be this formula. N is the, the turns of the coil. P is the flux. And I is the current. So the unit is uh, flux. can be Weber turn per amps. Or this is Henry. This is equivalent to Henry. So we measure inductance in terms of Henry. Another formula is because N times I is the flux linkage. So it's also okay. Another one is N squared over the reluctance. The square of the number of turns divided by its reluctance. We know reluctance. We discussed already reluctance. And we know that the unit for reluctance is uh, inverse Henry. So if we inverse that one, it will be Henry. We remove the formula of ID, the unit turn is not a unit actually. And here, this is the formula. We include the formula for the reluctance. So we came up with this formula. And if we include inductance in our induced EMF, so remember epsilon is equal to N times D flux over DT. This is negative. But we know that N flux, N times flux divided by A is L. And if we relate the current and the flux, or I, I multiply this one with uh, the current, or or uh, if we take the average volume, this one uh, n uh, times the flux divided by uh, if we solve here, uh, okay. From here, from this formula, we can solve for n times flux or the flux linkage would be equal to the current times l. But if we take uh, differentiate them at both sides, so we need to differentiate them at both sides. So n is constant. So d will be equal to l is also constant. L equal times d i. So if we substitute this one here because we know n d f here is l d i. So epsilon now or the the voltage in this EMF will be equal to n d flux, which is equal to l d i divided by so this is our formula for the induced EMF in terms of the inductance and the current. So let's take an example here. A coil consists of 750 turns, a current of 10 amps in the coil gives rise to a magnetic flux of 1,200 microweber. Determine the inductance of the coil and the average induced EMF in the coil when the current is reversed in 0 0.01 second. So to solve this one, so first, we need to determine the inductance of the coil. So from our formula, the inductance is equal to the number of turns times the flux divided by the current. So we are given 750 turns, we're given 10 amps, and we're given 1,200 microweber. So the inductance now will be 750 times the flux, 1,200, but this is micro, so this should be times 10 to the negative 6, all over the current, which is 10 amps. So the inductance will be so this will be in terms of Henry, 0 0.09 Henry. So this is the inductance using the formula. And now the current reverses from 10 amps to negative 10 amps. So it reverses. Then what should be the average induced EMF? So we use the formula here. So this is an average of E. I use E here will be equal to L di dt. So we, we only need to know the magnitude. L di dt. L times the change in I 
divided by the change in time or divided by time. So this will be L is, we have solved L, which is 0 0.09 Henry. Then the change in the current, so from this, this changes, it reverses. So from positive 10 to negative 10. So the change is 10 minus negative 10. Because it reverses from positive 10 to negative 10. Divided by the time is 0 0.01 seconds. So the time needed to reverse the current is 0 0.01 seconds. So the induced EMF now will be equal to this one. And this is 180 volts. Okay. Another example. An air cord solenoid has a length of 50 centimeter and diameter of 2 cm. Calculate the inductance if it has 1,000 turns. So here we, we are given with the length. This, has, this is an air cord solenoid. So how do we solve this one? How do we, know, how do we solve for the inductance? We cannot use the first formula because it's, there's no current given. So what are the given? First, we have the length which is 50 centimeter or this is 0 0.5 meters. We have the diameter, wait, we need the diameter, 2 centimeter or this is uh, 0 0.02 meters. Then we have the number of turns, N, which is 1,000. And we know that is uh, an air cord solenoid. So, if it's an air cord, so meaning the core is air, what is the relative permeability of air, mu r, will be equal to 1. So, that's, that's the given. So, what formula can we use here? The other formula for inductance, L, is equal to using the reluctance, but we have a direct formula for that one, n squared over the reluctance, or we can use the direct formula, which is mu naught times mu r times the area times the number of turns squared divided by the length. So are we given with mu naught? It's a constant, yes, relative permeability is 1 because this is an air core area. We can solve that one. How? Because the diameter is given. So if you want to solve for the cross-sectional area, then what formula can we use? So the area here now will be equal to pi d squared over 4, because the diameter is given. So pi times 0 0.02 all over 4. So the area now will be equal to, so this is 3.13 times 10 to the negative 4 square meter. Number of turns, given length. All given, so we can as we can now solve for the inductance. So this is equal to mu naught is four pi times ten to the negative seven times one. Permeability of air is one times the area, which is uh, three point one four times ten to the negative four, and lastly one thousand turns squared. Divide this one with the length, which is zero point five. So the inductance now will be equal to 28.9 times 10 to the negative 5 and the unit will be in handy. So we solve the inductance of the coil. So this is a very good way in determining uh, the inductance of a coil. Later on, when you have an applications uh, in your higher years, when you need to design a certain uh, for example, a DC-DC converter or any electronics, then you need inductors. Now, we uh, tester for inductors. We don't have, actually, we don't have Henry meter. It's rare to have uh, inductors, uh, meterings for inductors. So what we do is we use the formula here. We need to determine what type of core are you using in your inductor and the number of turns of your inductor and also the cross-sectional area of 
the core. So that's uh, good that you know now how to solve them using this formula. Okay, so let's go now to our next topic. This is now the start of uh, magnetically coupled circuits. So we discussed about inductance. Now let's discuss about what's uh, mutually, mutual inductance because we are talking about mutually in magnetically coupled circuits. So here, if we uh, place two inductors side by side, nearly side by side, now if we place them side by side, there is a uh, phenomenon called mutual inductance happening to the inductors. And this is the property, mutual inductance is the property of inductor to induce a voltage to other neighboring inductor. So if we have a current here at this part and we place a, another inductor beside this inductor, then there's a possible possibility that there's also a potential difference between the terminals of the coil on the other inductor and we then call them coupled inductors so and that property is we call mutual inductance so the higher the mutual inductance the higher the voltage that it can induce to the other conduct other inductor at the other side and that formula for the mutual inductance is equal to this one k times l1 squared of l1 times l2 where k is the coefficient of coupling coupling for this one so the the ranges of the value for the coupling k k ranges from 0 up to 1 0 to 1 so 1 being the perfect coupling meaning uh, 100% it can induce the voltage from here to here. Another way to solve for the in mutual inductance is to multiply the number of turns and divide it with the reluctance and so on here. So K is coefficient of coupling so we can determine this one by knowing the flux flowing here. 1, 2, so on. Then here, this is this are the induced EMF. If the EMF is on if we have a voltage at L1, then we can have a voltage induced at L2, which is equal to the mutual inductance times the change in current in uh, the first inductor divided by time. As well as uh, this one is also true if the other, other uh, inductor has a EMF. So these are formulas we can use. Then let's take an example. Two identical air cord solenoids have 200 turns length of 25 centimeter and cross sectional area of 3 square centimeter each. The mutual inductance between them is 0 0.5 micro Henry. Find the self inductance of each coil and the coefficient of coupling. Self inductance means this is the regular inductance of the coils. So we need to solve for L1 and L2 because there are the we have two in inductors here and they are identical. Take note, they are identical. So what does this mean? If they are identical, then therefore they're the same. L1 is equal to L2. And how do we solve this one? So we use again our formula mu naught mu or A times the number of turns squared divided by the length L. So this is air cord again, so mu r is just equal to 1. The area uh, is also given 3 square centimeter, and the length is also given 25 centimeter. So we can solve for our inductance now. So L1, L2, this will be equal to 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. This is mu naught times the area. Ah, we need to convert the area. The area is in. 3 square centimeters. So we need to divide that one with 100 centimeter per 1 meter. We square that one, so 3, 3 divided by 100 squared. So that will be equal to 3 
times 10 to the negative 4. So this is in square meters. Then we multiply it with uh, the number of turns, which is equal to 200. And divide it with the length, which is uh, 25 centimeter. And we convert that again into meters. So 25 divided by 100 is 0 0.25, 25 meters. So therefore, the inductance, self-inductance, could be equal to 60.318 micro Henry. So this is the self-inductance of the coils. And next is, we want also to determine the uh, coefficient of coupling. So we need to use the formula given the mutual inductance. This will be equal to K, the square root of L1 times L2. So we know L1 and L2 are equal to 60.318. So we can solve for K. K will be equal to M, which is also given is equal to what? 0 0.5 micro Henry, 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 6. And you divide it with the square root of L1 times L2. L1 and L2 are equal, so you just square that one. So you just divide it with 60.318 times 10 to the negative 6. Square root of square is will cancel out. So K now will be equal to 8.28. Nine times ten to the negative three. So this is unit less. It's a coefficient. Next, two coupled coils of self-inductance 0.6 Henry and 0.16 Henry have a coefficient of coupling equal to 0.8. Find their mutual inductance and turns ratio. What's turns ratio? Uh, the ratio of their turns. Turns n. So first, we need to determine the Mutual inductance, so given the self-inductance and the coefficient of coupling, M will be equal to K times square root of L1, L2. And we are given with K, which is 0 0.8. And you multiply it with the square root of 0 0.6 times 0 0.16. These are the self-inductance. So M now will be equal to 0 0.248 in Henry. It's also Henry, this is inductance but the metal inductance. Then, next is we want to determine the ratio of the turns or ratio N2 is to N1 or this is the same as N2 divided by N1. That's the ratio. So we need to determine N2 and N1. How do we do that? How do we determine N2 and N1? We need to use the uh, the characteristic of an induced coil. If we have uh, a voltage at one coil and there will be an induced coil V2 at the other inductor which is equal to what? Which is equal to what? This will be equal to M, the mutual inductance, times DI1 over DT. So the current at the first inductor. So this is the voltage induced in the second conductor, the second inductor. And also another way to solve is through uh, Faraday's law, which is N, N2, because we are solving for 2 n2 times d flux of 2. So this flux will be the flux from the, the second coil. So we will call it d flux 1, 2 divided with d t. So these two are equal. So we just equate them. So m d i1 divided by d t is equal to n2 D flux 1, 2 divided by DT. Uh, if you observe, I remove the negative signs here. This should be negative here because of the lens law. I remove them because it will also cancel out. Then from this, 
we can solve for m. So m now will be equal to what? What will be m here? So we can cancel out dt first. Then, because this is average, we can take it as average. So m will be equal to uh, n2 times, we can remove the differential here, x12 divided by the current. It's also true because this is a ratio. Remember, this is a ratio. So if we divide it, it's still the same. It's change. If you take the change, then it's fine. Next, uh, we can repeat this one to the other side. Or first, uh, we solve uh, we use the formula for k. k is equal to uh, phi 1, 2 divided by phi 1. So this is our formula here. Let's take a look. So phi 1, 2 over phi 1. Okay. So if we want to solve for phi 1, 2, this will be equal to k times phi 1. If we substitute it here, so the m now will be equal to uh, k times n2 or n2k here then plus 1 all over the current i then next we relate the inductance now we can relate the inductance so what is l1 how do we solve for the inductance n1 n times the flux is also 1 divided by the current. This is also 1. This is 1. This is also 1. So, if I solve for the current from this formula, I1 will be equal to L1 flux 1 divided by L1. Then, I will substitute this one here on the M side for the current and it's inverse then m will be equal to k times n2 times flux 1 divided by the current which is n1 flux 1 divided by l1 so we can now cancel out flux 1 here and what will be the remaining uh, values so we have here this one will be m equals uh, k times l1 and we have n2 over n1 so times n over n1 n2 over n1 and we want to solve this n2 over n1 here so n2 over n1 will be equal to m divided by k times l1 we know m we solve m it's 0 0.28 we know k k is 0 0.8 and we also know l1 that's equal to 0 0.6 so we can now solve for the ratio, which is equal to, which is equal now to 0 0.516. So that's N2 over N1. Alright. Next. Uh, before we end this part, the last example. By solution, two coils have a little inductance of 0 0.2 Henry. So they are equal L1 and L2. L1 is equal to L2 and that's 0 0.2 Henry. The current in one coil has changed from 10 amps to 4 amps. Calculate a average EMF induced EMF in the second coil. So let's 
A. And the second one, the change of flux link. We had the second coil if it's one with 500 turns. So first for the induced EMF. So how do we solve this one? Induced EMF on the second coil, V2. That's the induced EMF of the second coil. And that will be equal to, remember, M times VI1 over VT. And the, the current changes from 10 amps to 4 amps. So differential means change. So we can say that V will be equal to M, which is, ah, M, middle inductance. So this is wrong. Sorry. This is not L1, L2. This should be M. This should be M. It's the middle inductance. It's 0 0.2 times change in the current. So from 10 to 4. So 10 minus 4 with the time. The time needed is 10 milliseconds or this is 0 0.01. So the induced EMF of the second coil will be equal to 120 volts. This should be negative, but we, all, we only want the... Uh, Magnitude. That's the magnitude. Next, for letter B, how about the flux link? Change in flux link. So B. So how do you know the flux link? So we use again another formula for V2. Instead of M, we can use N. So this is V2 and N2. This would be N2. So N multiply it with the change in flux. So this is the the thing that we want to solve divided by change in time. So we know that the voltage at the new CMF is 120 volts. We solved already. Then we have the number of turns is 500 given. And we want to solve for the change in flux for a 0 0.01 or 1 millisecond of time. So change in flux now will be equal to this 0 0.01 times 120 divide it with 500 and that will be 2.4 the unit will be milli -weber. so this is the change in flux link actually this is uh two should be two or one should be one ah okay it's Okay, so that's the end of the, the first part of the second part. First part of the second part of uh, chapter 4.